Okay, so again, uh, I'll be talking on how to really promote urban agriculture by institutionalizing it in our local government units. So I'll be giving some examples on, on this one later. Uh, okay, so we have uh, one publication during the time of pandemic, sorry, it, it went. Uh, the time of the pandemic, which uh, assessing the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on agriculture production in the Philippines and Southeast Asia. Just to give you the summary of this one, but if you want to download the paper, you just go to our uh, journal on Asian Journal on Agriculture and Development, uh, June 2020. So in conclusion, we'll say the disruptions in agriculture, food systems create a supply and demand, demand shock on economic performance and food security in the Philippines and the whole world. COVID-19 pandemic reduced the volume production by 3.11% uh, or that's uh, uh, about 17 million tons due to the decline in agricultural labor affecting more than 100 million people. And of course, the COVID-19 caused about 1.4 decline in the uh, gross domestic product of Southeast Asia. Philippines also it's 1.5. 1.4 and equivalent to 3.7 billion US dollar. Okay, just to to summarize, these are the different programs from the from the from the government initiatives in Southeast Asia and the Philippines in response to COVID-19. You could see here in the last part, urban agriculture is very important. Uh, one of the uh, measures or one of the initiatives programs in in agriculture by the government, but how to make this institutionalized. That's what I'll be talking right now. So in here, you can see that the local governance on the ground, there is a changing narrative on how people view food because of the pandemic, how we view food, how we, uh, the, the interest of growing food in our backyard or how the interest of how farmers produce food. And the urban agriculture is a conscious response. So, to pressing concerns about food security, climate resilience, and their overall uh, well-being, uh, even in, in the midst of this urbanization and uh, increasing urban uh, population. So this pandemic has really underscored the connection. We, we feel the connection now between the supply chain and the consumption patterns and the urgent need to redefine agricultural systems as food systems. So food systems na tayo also underscores the role of the local government units to cultivate stakeholders with a transformative mindset. So uh, who are adept on understanding the growing complex of social concerns and able to affect positive change now in the, and in the future. So you could see here that uh, the role of the different units is uh, very important to make, uh, to make our life more uh, in the, um, the new normal more smarter. Uh, okay, so I'll be showing you some various designs of urban agriculture systems that are really for your choosing, but that support for innov innovation that will be crucial to ensure it should be compatible, it should be scalable and applicable to conditions of a target adapters because we see some from the western world or from the modern world uh, urban agriculture and we want to apply it in our in our locality but we have to consider our conditions our financial resources and uh, in our and, and the politics okay so this is just example of the emerging ideas of urban uh, farming which or agriculture where you are all familiar i just want to enumerate them containerized containerized and modular farming. So if you have a small area, you could uh, you could put your, your plants in pots or in big uh, pails or uh, food that be, can be grown in containers. We can make use of recycled products, surplus materials, and use the energy of the sun to make it happen. So we have to use, uh, we have to recycle some products and within your area. So you, you could start small. Vertical farming, which utilizes the height of, to maximize plant growth. In small area, we have different levels of plants. This type of farming could uh, be best utilized in integration and overall 
design and infrastructure. So you could have the uh, uh, example in the picture like this. You call it the vertical farming, maximizing the light, maximizing the space, and increasing the productivity. And of course, we have the closed loop system. We have the circular economy. Everything should be used. So this combines technologies on crop production, water conservation, water to energy, solar power, aquaculture, and this is based on the concept of nutrient efficiency through reduced dependence on external outputs. So produce more from your own uh, inputs. So those are the concepts that we want to introduce because some of the materials are not available. So what is what are the kitchen waste that you could use in your to grow your plants? So those are the techniques that we have to be uh, to be to inculcate in the mind of our consumers in our in our population or in our municipality or in our barangays. Okay, so these are the basic management. I'll not be going to the details of this one. This is very agronomy or very uh, crop science, basic culture management in urban setting can be broken down into three general principles. If you are a plantito, plantita, you should think of these three and not go to the details. Provide unrestricted condition for free movement of the growth of the roots. So the uh, your 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 the roots of the plants are very important. So you make them soft, so tender, loving care in producing them. Make sure of uh, nutrients are there, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Uh, you could easily uh, get those from your waste, uh, from the kitchen or other organic waste, uh, easily available to the plant using, you could supplement it with uh, microorganisms and humic acid. Make a strong root system using plant growth regular source supplement. What I'm saying is planting vegetables or any agriculture is knowledge intensive. You have to learn. Uh, Kami, we have to go up to PhD to learn all these uh, basic principles. But uh, what I'm saying is uh, it's a knowledge intensive. The good thing now you have the YouTube, you have all the, you could Google it how to do it, but you have to be selective what to, to, to expect because sometimes the videos are showing uh, more than what we expect or we will just be frustrated. So start small and scale it out. Okay. I'll just give you an example of the some of the urban agriculture programs and projects by some of our local government units in the Philippines, which seems to be flying, and how the urban agriculture had been uh, harnessed in response to COVID-19 or climate change uh, that we are experiencing right now. Give me an example is in Santa Rosa uh, City, Laguna, Philippines. This is near Los Baños. The city government of Santa Rosa has implemented a pilot urban agriculture demonstration project as part of their effort to strengthen the city's climate change adaptation program, while also ensuring the promotion of safe and nutritious and fresh produce. So this is spearheaded by the City uh, Environment and Natural Resource Office. The city government of Santa Rosa has joined implementing the project with schools of the UPLB uh, and funding from the technical support from the uh, International Council of, um, of Local Environmental Initiatives, Local Government of Sustainability, Southeast Asia. So in addition to the establishment of the demonstration farms that showcase the several containerized and modular setups, selected bar barangay representatives undergo series of training on urban farming. So you can see here how they work the weather from the local government, from the international people, from the barangay level, from the UPLB academy, industry, government interconnectivity to make this happen. Another example is in the Siayan city of Monyos, uh, Nueva Ecija, Philippines, where they use hydroponics. And uh, that's earlier than when the COVID-19 came, it was, well, uh, it was more scaled up they see the importance of using it for food security in their in their community. So this is just an example. They collaborate with the Department of Agriculture, University, uh, to, and Barangay. So you could see the interconnectivity of the different uh, champions to make this happen. Another example is in Quezon City. So the Quezon City government launched the uh, urban agriculture program 
2010. Sometimes they use it joy for urban farming program. So you know what does it mean? You see the involvement of the local uh, leaders to make this happen. So they promoted it in uh, Quezon Memorial Circle in collaboration with DA uh, Agricultural Training Institute. So you have to be creative to, to partner with the technical people to make this happen. So they distribute seedlings and make people happy and more because that, uh, that area is a very conducive, very nice for demonstrating urban agriculture or urban farming. So this is just an example how it looked like in Central Luzon State University, spearheading they have the technology on aquaponics and you could see the joy of urban farming program in Quezon City and just show you the example of the pictures, how the community has been involved. And these are the entry points of mainstreaming the urban agriculture strategy in comprehensive land use planning. I'll not be going into the details here, but if you are interested really, I'll you, I'll show you the website uh, or the, the policy brief that we, we made and you could go to download it and see how it's done. So you have to look at the, we have the outputs from the, from the local government, uh, local uh, climate change adaptation uh, program of the government outputs and look at uh, and look at how the comprehensive land use planning, you could see how to organize here all the steps going uh, from organization up to implementation together with the implementation of uh, urban agriculture in the uh, comprehensive land use planning of every municipality. So the most important here is once the, the municipality are doing their comprehensive land use planning, urban agriculture should be part or, or you have to mainstream the urban agriculture there. So the entry point of mainstreaming urban agriculture study in local climate change uh, plans. So you have at the plan, you have the preparatory stage to mainstream um, urban agriculture, include ag agriculture office in the local, in the local climate change uh, adaptation program team. So that we have to organize organization of multi-sectoral team, more inclusive approach in stakeholders analysis. So all the details are here. So in all the measures or activities they're doing, you have to mainstream urban agriculture and uh, include them in the output so that it will be the output is very important. Once you include the urban agriculture, the output for this local uh, climate change application initiatives or program, LG envisioned a climate change resilient city municipality. So you have to show that to the politician and they will be implementing it if you put the uh, urban, the importance of our, our urban agriculture in their input. So you have to be creative, you have to influence different partners to make this happen. And up to the planning budgeting, so you have to mainstream agriculture, identify urban agriculture's project programs, activities as priority strategy so that you could get money from the local government under the uh, this uh, local climate change uh, adaptation program because they have the money there that you do put urban agriculture to be implemented. Okay, so I just show here some of the policy recommendations to mainstream agriculture in the local government, mainstreaming uh, urban agriculture in local in local development and policy planning, organization of a multi-sectoral team on encouraging champions of um, urban agriculture in the city and municipal and barangay. So you have to involve everything up to strengthening the capacity of the barangay officials on urban agriculture, inventory of spaces suitable for urban agriculture and secure security of land use regular capacity building and market developments, sustainable funding and financing. So these are the things you have to implement. So if you want to go to the details of this, we have a policy brief on, on these uh, imperatives to improve, uh, promote urban agriculture. And this is the website. And after this one, we have this and we will be uh, giving out books now. We will be printing the books of mainstreaming urban agriculture for climate change adaptation in the Philippines, which includes uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So in conclusion, I would say to inst institutionalize urban agriculture, the LGU in the Philippines must take active leadership in mainstreaming 
uh, urban agriculture, integrate it in the formulation of the comprehensive land use plan and local local climate change adaptation plan, then complement existing programs of the Department of Agriculture. So you have to play around this one to make it happen, institutionalize it. Thank you very much. And this is the website that you could get the policy brief and give you an example also what are, how to uh, influence to, to institutionalize urban agriculture in, 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 in your community, in your municipality, in your city. Thank you very much. And back to you, Sheila.